Something that seems to go a thread through all these things you're saying, though, is your great exuberance, your, your beautiful, honest, genuine, and warm enthusiasm, even just in talking about these things, Ben. And this enthusiasm that you exude comes from the belief in the things you're doing, right? Oh, this is real. <laughs> I couldn't anymore make believe. <laughs> I couldn't anymore make believe than... Uh, I just couldn't. It just, uh, it is that way or it isn't that way. And for me, it is that way. See, now, after 30 years, I begin to see the other end, the other side. See, in the beginning, we had an expression that you ensure with Feldman you live forever. But you know what? It isn't right. And the actuaries are right. And these people do die. And they do die. And the love mortality gradually wear off. The underwriting wears off. And you know, 10 years go by, 20 years go by, and hey, these people are beginning to die. So I see what's beginning to happen. You know, the promise in a policy, we promise to pay the face amount immediately upon proof of death. Boy, I see so many men who have exchanged a lifetime for this pile of assets. What's this pile of assets? Oh, he's got a building down here. And it, it's a business, and he's got some inventory in it, and he's got some of this and some of that. This whole doggone pile, maybe the whole darn thing, amounts to $500,000. That's what he did with a lifetime, accumulated $500,000. You know what I did? Over here, I've got a pile, and it's $500,000. And you know what my pile cost? Maybe $1,000 a month. This business over here could pay $1,000 a month while he was running it. And I created more with my 1000 a month than he did with his lifetime. Think about that. I've seen these, a professional man, a doctor, that will pass away and maybe have a total estate of $300,000. I can create $300,000 with a, with a drop of ink. My 300000 will come walking in and just interest only on that. It'll pay back more each year than you paid each year. $300,000, put it someplace, even at 5%. And you know what it'll pay back? More than the premium on the policy. Maybe you paid for the policy, what, 500 a month, 600 a month, 700 a month? Let's take 300000 at, let's say, 6% interest. That's 18000 a year. That's 1500 a month. You can accomplish more with more certainty with life insurance than you can with a lifetime. See, the average agent, he calls on John Jones, and John Jones doesn't have any money, and they're resisting each other, and after a while the agent feels maybe it's personal a little bit. Maybe, you know, he's saying no to me. He isn't saying no to him. He just doesn't have any extra money. But the agent isn't sure enough, isn't certain enough of what he's doing to do it. And so he backs away after a while. See, that case, if I were attempting to present a $100,000 policy that someone should have, and the premium was, let's say, $3,000 a year, and he just couldn't afford the 3000 a year, don't cut the 100000 just cut the premium. Change the plan. Change the plan from life to term. Change the plan to maybe a five-year term. And you'll cut the premium down by... You cut it from 3000 to 1000 You may cut it down from 3000 depends on age, but maybe around $700, $50, 60 a month. And tell them, now look, we've got five years' time. Somewhere along the way, we'll begin to convert this. And we'll make retro conversions. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll come back to today. We'll give you credit for all the term premiums. And we'll make it possible, make it doable. See, yeah. <laughs> the, the agent quit. They become, a, they become afraid of the case. They don't understand the case. The man has a problem, and the agent should show that the price tag on the problem, doing something costs something, doing nothing costs something, and quite often doing nothing costs a lot more than trying to do something about it. Somebody pays. You won't do it, then you will pay for it by doing without. Do you believe in, in pre-establishing your calls, that is, your personal calls with telephone calls, or how do you go about it? 
you get call reluctance, you know, there's a little hesitancy now and then, the turn down, turn down, turn down type of thing. You know, I fight so hard for time. You don't have time to live, you don't have time to breathe, you don't have time to think. Uh, so I tend to use telephones more than normally, but my method of making a call is just to make the call. I'm okay with that. It's busy sometimes. Even though he's so busy, he'll still out of courtesy see you for just a moment or two. So what you're saying is that you don't make a telephone call with an appointment, but you walk in off the street, literally, uh, so to speak. Well, I know. See, when I call on Mr. Smith, I know a heck of a lot more about Mr. Smith than he thinks I know about Mr. Smith. I've done the homework and I've done the research, and I know someone who knows Mr. Smith. I may have gotten the DNB, but I know a little bit about him, and maybe know enough about him to know that this is his company. And he wants to continue the company. And we have a contract designed to ensure one year's profits. Wouldn't you like to ensure one year's profits? Oh, yes. Yeah. We have a contract designed to do that, and I'll show it to you. Now, he may brush me off, but that's all right. I don't mind. I don't mind going back twice. When I come back the second time, I'm no longer a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. He's halfway expecting me back. And this is how you work. This is how you prospect. You know, if an agent wants to wait until everything just so, get down, I'm only going to go where I'm wanted. Well, tell me where you're wanted. Tell me who wants to see you. I care what you're selling. You want money for it, and there isn't any. So you have no place to go. Get out of the office and begin making calls. People are courteous. Everybody's selling something. I don't care if it's a shoemaker fixing your shoes. He's selling something. He's fixing shoes. And that's how this world goes along. We trade. We exchange. We're all, and we should be doing the thing we know how to do best. So begin calling on people. Get an idea. I like to make up a package and give it a name yeah. and present that. These names intrigue me, too, Ben. Can you share some of the, the ideas of names that you do with your packages? We have a special mm, key man policy. It's a $100,000 policy. And I use a tape writer to put on it. Key man policy for Lee Rossler. Oh. <laughs> and I'll walk in and I'll say, this is something designed to do something unusual. What will it do? It requires $3,000 a year. Now, as you pay it in, we pile up 2500 We only keep 500 And for the 500 the day you walk out, I'll walk in and I'll bring 100000 Over and above that, say 10 years have gone by, and you've invested 10 times 3, that's 30000 and you're, mm, you've piled up 25000 cash value, we'll give that back too. You've put in thirty of which 25000 is equity, so we'll pay the hundred and the 25000 So we only kept five. Where would you put 5000 to round it up to a hundred? Now here's a key man policy. Why should you have a key man policy? Because you are a key man. You know, in this company of yours, there are two kinds of assets, money and management. Money is worth whatever it costs. If you go down to the bank to make a loan, the bank wants 6% interest, 7% interest, 8% interest, and that's the value of the money. And you, as a key man, put the money to work, and you make, make it earn twice what it costs, three times what it costs, four times what it costs. We have a plan designed to ensure continuity for your company, to underwrite profits, to make sure that Maybe they'll have to liquidate the company, but they won't have to do it overnight. Maybe they owe the bank money, and it could very well be the day you walk out, the bank may want out, they want their money. Well, the day you walk out, you made provision for money to walk in. So we call that a key man policy. Companies need credit. Pick up the phone, call your bank, and ask your banker, would they extend the same line of credit to the man who takes your place? And who would take your place? Who in your company do you have that would take your place? Say, so we've got a cushion that'll buy some time. That's the key man policy. We've got all kinds of policies. I have an estate tax policy. 
To do what? To make money? Not to make money. Just to keep together what you put together. And he'll say, I have enough insurance. I have enough liquidity in my estate. Wonderful. For today you have enough. What about tomorrow? You're going to keep on doing what you've been doing, plowing back. Ten years from now, maybe it's twice the size. So let's underwrite a little bit of tomorrow. Tomorrow has a way of coming. Maybe you can get it, maybe you can't. Let's get it now. All kinds of policies. You disturb me as you put these things out, and yet I feel very secure when you finish with them. Is this part of what your selling theory is, then? Disturbing people, showing them they do have a problem, and showing a solution that's doable. Mm -hmm. A workable problem. Mm -hmm. It would seem, at least, that the most difficult part of selling is selling ourselves. Would you feel this might be part oh, of it? Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> if I don't first buy it, I can't sell it. See, beyond that, the other man must be sure that you know, and is so sure that you are certain of what you're doing, that he buys a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Your, your self-assurance, then, helps to generate your own confidence in yourself and subsequently would generate it in him. Mm -hmm. And that's why the agent that's growing should keep building his own personal program. Well, you, you talk about a lot of this thinking big so that, you know, he is building his own personal program. He isn't just building a prepackaged type thing, but he's thinking big of, of developing himself and thinking big along big lines. How can you constantly keep up to think big? Do you have days of depression, days when things don't seem quite so right? <laughs> don't we all? If you set yourself a goal, the, there'll be some problems. There better be problems with a goal or it wasn't worth doing. But if you set yourself a goal, you'll come very close to reaching it. A big goal where you will bump your nose and stub your toe, because that's what makes it worthwhile. And even if you don't quite get it done, the next goal you set Maybe you will get it then, and you grow a little bit. Things don't always go smoothly, no. Don't expect them to go smoothly, but you make progress by planning it. We have two well-known insurance salesmen who are going to act out a simulated sales interview with Ben Feldman. Ben Silver and Reed Britton will act as co-stockholders in the Atlas Manufacturing Corporation. Their net worth is approximately $500,000. They own the corporation and have been in business for 10 years. As the situation begins, Mr. Feldman is calling on them to discuss their insurance needs. They've never heard of Ben Feldman, and what he knows about them, they aren't sure. Mr. Britton, we have a mutual friend, and Mr. Lewis, he mentioned your name. I just like the pleasure of meeting you. Uh, Mr. Who? Mr. Lewis. Oh, uh, Joe Lewis. And uh, he mentioned your name. I was calling on him recently. He mentioned your name. May I say quite favorably, and since I'm always looking for people and prospects, I've taken the liberty of calling on you. I have some ideas. If you have a moment, I'd like to present them to you. Uh, and what business are you in, Mr. I'm, I'm with the New York Life Insurance Company. I see. Well, of course, you know that uh, we're, Ben and I have been in business for quite a long time, and we own quite a lot of insurance. And so I'm not really sure that there would be anything that you could do for us, but I'm, I am very happy that you called to see me. Well, I do appreciate that, that very much. You say you've been in business for some time? About 10 years. About 10 years. And I imagine your company's growing, is it now? really is. Yep, we're very proud of it. We started with uh, $5,000 that uh, the two of us scratched together, and uh, it's worth quite a bit of money now. Gee, that's wonderful. You know, people like you that made America big, you know what you're doing? You're making progress, but because you're growing and you're making money, you're probably plowing everything back in, aren't you? Uh, yes, we draw out enough to live on, and and the rest of it just seems to be needed by the company. By the way, here's my partner. Hi, Ben. Come on in here. I want you to meet Mr. Feldman. Well, hello, Mr. Silver. How, How are you? How are you, Mr. Feldman? <clears throat> nice to know you. Mr. Clark. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You've got a very successful company. I gather you started with next to nothing, and now... Apparently, it's worth many, many times that. I, I presume the bulk of what you have in this world is probably wrapped into this company? Oh, I would say the best part of it is 
Coleman. Do you sell life insurance? Yes. I see. Yes. And I have some ideas that might be of interest to you. Well, of course, uh, Reed has probably already told you that we have substantial insurance. And uh, we have been well taken care of in the past through an insurance agent with another company, yeah. so that we have no false illusions to begin with. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's very, very nice of you. Your company, you say that uh, you own it together? Yes, we're equal stockholders. And if, if Mr. Silver walked out, would, would his, his widow become your new partner? No, we anticipated that problem uh, several years ago, and uh, we had an agreement drawn. So that if he dies, uh, the corporation will buy his interest and vice versa. I say, no, several years ago? Yes, about yeah. oh, five or six five years, six years ago. ago. Yes, approximately. Now, do you still feel the corporation has adequate money walking in to do what has to be done? Well, I, I think so. We, we certainly have grown some, but uh, we'd have no problem in meeting any balance that would be due, however. If you had to have more money, you would simply go borrow the money, I presume? Oh, yes. I, I imagine you have a good line of credit. Well, we have established a good line of credit. Good line of credit. Yeah. The thing that would probably happen, there's enough money that would come in to make a down payment. And then our agreement says that, if, for instance, if Ben dies, that uh, the corporation will have 10 years, for example, to pay it, to pay it off. Now, I presume there's an interest factor. Yes, yes. Uh, it's 6%, uh, I believe. If you could expand your program so that you could have enough of dollars coming in for a cost to your company of no more than the interest would be, if you went to the bank to get the same number of dollars, might that be of some interest to you? What do you mean? Well, if you go to the bank to borrow money, of course, you have to promise to pay it back. And meanwhile, until that time, of course, you must also pay the interest on the loan. Well, the New York Life Rights Contract where the net cost of the contract would be about the equivalent of interest on a loan. And we would pay it back. Now, how do you do that? Well, suppose I put it together, and you take a look. Now, all I need is medical underwriting. Well, I'd like to know just a little bit more about that. Now, what, uh, explain this just a little bit further. Uh, I might say that our company is now worth approximately a half million dollars, and each of us are already insured for 100000 well, uh, we, we don't see really where we need anything more. Well, you would need, uh, under your agreement, you do have time to pay whatever has to be paid. Yes. But you do have to pay it. Yes, and of course, interest is deductible, you know, so if, if it's 6%, then it's, then, then it's only but, costing us 3 mm, That's true, but it will cost you something. Yes. It will cost you at least 3 Uh huh. Well, now, we have a contract for $100,000. And the cash build up in the contract, the premium on the contract is four thousand a year. The build up is three. The net cost of the contract is one. And for the one thousand, we will someday pay your company one hundred thousand. Sounds very good, Mr. Feldman. Why, why don't you uh, why don't you get get the figures together so we can look it over? Both Reed and I will talk about it. We undoubtedly will want to talk to our attorney too because we just don't do anything without consulting him. But it is, it does have some merit. I mean, it does have some interest to you. Well, I'm not sure about that. We, we at least would love, we, we certainly would look it over. If you get us the figures, then we'll let you know. All right, I'll be very happy to get you the figures. I'm sorry for interrupting you, Mr. Benton. Well, uh, uh, while you and Ben were talking, I was just thinking uh, that you would want $4,000 from each of us. That's $8,000. You say that 6000 would go into equity, 2000 would be the cost, but that still means that we have to come up with 8000 per year, doesn't yes, it? Yes, and if that were a problem, my company would be very happy to finance the 6000 for you. And the rate of interest would be the same as your bank's charging, not more than 6 So that, uh, but instead of building equities, then we would be building some loans, and of course it wouldn't be long until those loans would eat up our uh, policy, right? Well, now, the loans wouldn't eat up your policy. We have a policy structured to maintain the face value regardless of the accumulated loan. But actually, yours is the kind of a company that's growing, and you're making money. And I don't think you want to build cash value in my company. You'd rather build cash value in your company. 
I think really all you should look to my company for is face value. Just face value. Assuming it was $100,000 for each one, well, then the contract we'd bring in would be to pay $100,000 upon death of either party, or both, as the case may be. I can, I can see that. I can see that uh, that uh, with our company growing as fast as it is. See, we paid income tax on 150000 last year. So well, all I can see that... Um, we wouldn't have problems in paying a premium, nor would we have problems in buying each other out. But on the other hand, Ben, uh, the hundred thousand we've had has certainly not been difficult to pay, and you know we've got some pretty good sized cash values built up in that now. Yes, and I kind of like them. Yeah, and we're getting some new then. <laughs> right. Uh, so um, it, it might be that uh, this is something that would fit. But I do think that we ought to have our attorney go over this. Uh, maybe we ought to send the uh, the. Um, uh, agreement down to our lawyer and have him look. He might have some wrinkles, and maybe he could figure some reason where we could do it without insurance. I don't know. What do you think? Well, he certainly we he certainly should look at it. I know in the past, Mr. Feldman, we just haven't done anything uh, without his consultation. Plus the fact, too, as I mentioned right from the beginning, we have been doing business with this other insurance man for many years, and if we are going to do anything at all, we probably would do it with him. Well, that's wonderful. I appreciate very much the cases that I have written, that we sort of, sort of work together and stay together. That's beautiful. But you know, you've got a growing, expanding company. You made $150,000 last year. Part of it went for tax. Part of it didn't. Part of it went in the surplus. It went into the company. Your company is getting bigger. There's a need for more money. Maybe not a need for more insurance, but a need for more money. You will need more money. I have guaranteed dollars, discounted dollars. They're different from the kind of a dollar you earn where you share it with Uncle Sam. You'll earn something on my dollar. On 100000 where you pay 4000 a year, you pay $0.04 cents per dollar. I'll give you back $0.03. Cents. I'll only keep $0.01. Cent. For the $0.01, cent, I'll pay a dollar. It would take a long time to pay a dollar for a dollar. You are growing. You are growing. You are plowing profits back in. What I would like to suggest is let's make sure what we're talking about can be done. All I need currently, just to make sure you look good on the outside, an exam. Let's take a look at the inside. And if you qualify, if everything is all right, then we'll get a contract issued. And then if you'd like, we can talk with your attorney. Really, there isn't much to talk about with your attorney as yet we don't really know if we can get what we're talking about well uh, mr feldman uh, as it turns out uh, I, I i think that reed also had a recent physical but i i know that i just did and my, and my doctor says i'm in absolute perfect health so i don't think we have to be worried about whether or not i can qualify you know that isn't the kind of an examination that i have in mind see the doctor when he examines you will take a look at you and you look good, and your pressure is normal, and your weight's normal, and they'll pat you on the back and say, Mr. Silver, you're in wonderful shape for a man your age. We don't do that. When we take a look at you, we're looking at life expectancy. We're looking down the road. We're looking at how long you're going to live. Wouldn't you like to know? Yes. Uh, what sort of obligation are we under if we take this? You're really under no obligation. Really? Let me come back. Let me show you what could be done. Now, whether you do it or not, of course, depends on whether you think it fits. What do you think, Ray? Well, uh, I was just thinking, that 100000 we have, you know, that's pledged up at the bank. That's right. I'd forgotten about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how much of that money would be available if one of us uh, were turned into an angel overnight. But... Uh, uh, it, I'll tell you, I think it would be a good thing if we looked at what Mr. Feldman has. By the way, did you, you mentioned Mr. Lewis. Did you happen to insure him? Yes, I have $2 million in Mr. Lewis between our, just between ourselves. How can mm -hmm. that guy have $2 million? We're almost as big as he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, we all know Mr. Lewis, and we're not talking out of turn. You know that, frankly, he's first a very aggressive individual, and second, has borrowed quite a lot of money. And, of course, when you borrow money, the bank will ask you, do you intend to pay it back? Sometimes they'll go so far as to do what they did with you. 
they'll ask you to assign the promise to pay back to them in the form of a life insurance promise. It's no longer yours, and that belongs to the bank. And the day you walk out, they want out. That's why. And that, frankly, has helped Mr. Lewis to expand his credit line. Okay, Mr. Feldman, I think we'll go along. Now, just what information are you going to need? Well, let me first just arrange your your examination for you and make sure that we're all right there. I don't really need much more than that at the moment. This concludes side two. Please fast forward to the end of this tape and continue to cassette two, side one, for more of the interview with Mr. Feldman.